All right, y'all, we're back. We got round three with my brother, Shervin Jaferia, the founder of Symbiotica Supplements, uh, the Everwell Steiner studied man who I absolutely love. Uh, we did a phenomenal podcast, one of my favorite of all time um, podcast before last. This one's great, don't get me wrong, but one of my favorites of all time uh, was the Lucifer and Aramon podcast we did on, on the teachings of Rudolf Steiner. And that was our last one we did. So I'll link to that in the show notes if you missed it. It's a must listen. Uh, we catch up basically following up on some of those principles in a podcast that uh, Shervin just did on his podcast show, Wake the Fake Up, with his cousin, David Avocado Wolf, all on parasites. It's a fucking phenomenal issue, phenomenal uh, podcast uh, and a big issue. So check that out. We'll link to that in the show notes as well. And I hope you guys love this one as much as I did. Shervin's a great fucking dude. He's always on the path of awakening, of learning, of growing, and of figuring out some of the fucking coolest, most potent things you can put in your body, which I absolutely love because people like him, I can think about other shit. And then when something new comes out, I can say, fuck yeah, what's this? Let me get into it and experience the benefits of it. And without further ado, my brother, Shervin Jaferia. All right, we, you were you were just starting to tell me about some of this, some of these goodies that I just took, which I definitely want to dive into today, along with the world. But it seems like Symbiotica has just been fucking blowing up lately. What you call it, hyperbolic phase? We're definitely in that hyperbolic critical mass. Get Everybody's swole. talking about it. Yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> and, and for good reason. Just because you know people like you and and the tribe and the Symbiotic organization, everybody's just like all in. They see it now. It's like okay, this is real. You know, we were playing around before a little bit, but now it's like, okay, this is real and we're really helping people. And that's that's really what it is. It's not anything else. It's not some marketing thing or anything. It's just like people are like, wait a second, I'm starting to feel better and I got to tell the next person. And when that starts to happen, then you have that, you know, 100 monkey effect or critical mass or whatever you want to call it. And I'm seeing it and feeling it just because of the position that I'm in with the company. It's, it's full on, dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, it's funny that you say it now because I've kind of felt that way for a while, but you obviously being in the position that you're in, understand it better than anyone. But I was just waiting for that. That was the thing I was harping on people. And it's funny, I just, I'd met a guy who said he had done a little IT work for um, someone in your company. And I was like, I know Shervin. And he was like, no fucking shit. And it was just this morning. I actually was going for a walk and he said, nice t-shirt. I was like, how do you know them? And uh, we got, we got to talking, but I was, I was explaining how when I was at on it, I wanted to create in total mitochondria exactly what you did in Regenesis, the glutathione product. PQQ, it was like we, we need PQQ, Q, we need ubiquinol, you know, advanced form CoQ10, and we need to stack that with, with glutathione. That's right. And all three of those are very expensive. Very expensive. Right? So because the turnaround wasn't good enough, it got voted down by several people. And I was like, you don't understand. Like, make your money on Alpha Brain, New Mood, wherever the, the, the biggest swing is, cool. But when it comes to creating new shit, it has to fucking work. That's that's it, dude. You make it work and and... The Alpha Brain wasn't as cheap as it is now. You became cheaper because you fucking sold so many of it and you kept buying it and buying it and buying it. It became cheaper and cheaper, right? Yeah. But like you create the thing that is absolutely going to blow people's fucking socks off and that's the draw because now I have that expectation. Anything I buy from Semiotica, I know it's going to work and I know it's going to work incredibly well, if not better than anything else that exists right now. I really appreciate you saying that and everything that you're talking about is is 100% accurate. And I think the beauty of what we're doing is, you know, myself and um, my partner, CEO Shahab, who you just spoke to earlier, is that we have a really clear understanding that at the, at the root of what we're doing with Symbiotica, it's got to work. It's got to help people. We'll figure out how to make it more economical for us down the line. And like you said, once you have more people involved, more people understand the product, more people are getting the product, then our ability to manufacture and produce and our buying power for raw materials and things like that, things that we're not producing in-house if we're not, are get m- much more, you know, applicable to economics. And so we're, we're not re- re- we don't reverse engineer for on an e- economy standpoint and come back in. It's we got to build the best product set and then figure it out later down the road. And right now we're figuring it out. You know, it's we, we've hit that point now where we're able to pass the savings on to the customer. You know, we've we've built this robust system way outside of my pay grade. That's our technology department in our bundling service and it's all the best. Things. So I just, it just changed my bundle. I was like, you've made it so fucking easy. So just to switch it around for, we, you know, we were just talking tattoos before we jumped on and you've got a beautiful sleeve and I'm just finishing mine. Yeah, Absolutely incredible. And, um, 
uh, Tosh was, you know, right when Tosh went to get hers, which was right before mine, she's like, we got to load up on glutathione. And I was like, of course we do. So I started buying five at a whack and did that for several months. And then I was like, oh, I don't think I need this for a while. I'm not getting a tattoo for, for a minute here. And so we just pushed pause for two months. Then it picked back up. And I was like, I think I should just change it. So now we're going with vitamin C and creatine and a bunch of other shit that I've wanted to try for a very long time. And it's just like, like it's so convenient, you know? It's so convenient. Right from the phone, tink, 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 tink. Change the date even so I can get it sooner. Done. There's no one to talk to. There's no one to fix anything. It, it's it's really incredible. I, the Symbiotica family, man, what, what they're doing over there in, in within the organization, nothing is outsourced. Nothing. Our customer service in-house, in California. Okay, who's doing that? All our, te- all our technology, all the code writers that build these systems so people like me, you, everybody out there can have such a versatile, easy system to get products, stop things, add things, move dates, whatever you want, the versatility of that. That's exceptional. And that's, that's really part of Symbolica. Not only are we making, in my opinion, the best products out there with the best intention, especially now with Symbiotica 3.0, but we're also making the, the experience match the, the formulas. M- might even pass the formulas at some rate because that's how incredible the people are. I'm just one tiny extension of Symbiotica at this point. You know, yeah, I founded Symbiotica, but with my partners and team and the way that it's expanded the entire staff, everybody's all in. It's, inc- it's really incredible. When I go down to the campus, I'm just like, whoa, is this really happening? And I, I'm meeting people I've never met before that are just, you know, they're so like, they're so enthusiastic to be there and to be part of this movement. Most of them are, have come on board because, you know, they were Symbiotica you know, people, you know, they were on the products. And that just kind of like brought them in. They're like, okay, we want to be part of this. And they're bringing their expertise to, this, to the whole thing. It, it's, it's the best ever. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking rad. I've, I've yeah. witnessed that in a few places. Um, you know, when we, when we first got to hang out at Paul Check's Mandala Workshop, um, that's something I always noticed about the Organifi folks. It was like, all of y'all have fucking huge smiles on your face. All of y'all clearly love what you're doing. Like there's a, there's a vibe there, right? And, yeah. it's a, and, that's, and that's attracted the right people in. And it's really cool. Of course it is. That that, that would happen with symbiotica well I, you know you're in town anytime i see you i want to fucking get you on the podcast so that's a no-brainer uh listen to a podcast you did with your cousin david avocado wolf where you're really talking about two things parasites and this new product parex so i want to dive into this and obviously let's let's blow the fucking the lid wide open on it because you know where we're, there's a lot of parasitic energy the last time we spoke we talked on we spoke on lucifer and aramon or aramon and that was one of the best podcasts I've ever released. I've had a lot of people reach out to me about that and then continue on to actually dive into um, some of Steiner's work because of that podcast we did together. I don't think a day goes by that I don't get someone tagging me in that, sending it to me, saying how much this podcast opened their entire perspective on their life, on how they're operating in their own consciousness. That po- You're talking about the one that we did um, at my old house yep. on the couch. Yep. Dude, that, that, I, I, I listened to that the other day. That was phenomenal, man. Thank you for showing up for that. That was incredible. Yeah, it was absolutely incredible. If you haven't listened to that, I, I forgot what number it was. We'll link to it in the show notes. We'll, we'll It'll just be it. right there. Quickly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just fucking pop over and drop back in. Yeah. So, so understanding, you know, there is deep parasitic energy, you know, that, that we're dealing with, you know, as above, so below. It's not just something like, hey, I got to get these worms out of me, right? Like there, there is an aspect of as above, so below. So let's take care of ourselves first and see if that has a ripple effect through the cosmos. But at the same time, uh, knowing we have the birth of Araman in in the in form, maybe not human flesh, but in form, this this hundred years, and uh, knowing what we're up against from the Great Reset's model of living, and uh, you'll own nothing and be happy, and all the fucking freedoms that are about to be or trying to be taken from us, I should say. Um, how does that all factor in? You know, there's this parasitic energy and and what's going on inside of us as well as outside of us. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, a, a parasite needs to keep the host alive and needs to suck the energy out for its survival. It's in its very ethos. It's in its DNA or whatever you want to call it. It's in its, its, its consciousness. And a parasite can be communal, meaning creating balance and serving some potential role. There are, there are organisms in the body that are non-mammalian that create balance in the body. We know that. A healthy microbiome, for example, needs to have healthy bacteria strains and organisms in there that help us digest food and interpret what's what and how we can actually analog stuff and use it for our own ability to survive and thrive and all those things. But a parasitic organism by its very nature 
is taking from you and robbing you of your own value. And when you look at the system that is being you know, brought upon us right now, it's parasitic by nature. Now, we don't have to go down a massive rabbit hole. It's pretty clear on how you know, systems are being played right now and how it's you know, taking the, the, the energy of the people and, and telling them there's something that they're not. That's parasitic by nature. Toxins in the environment are parasitic by nature. M- removing your liberties is parasitic by nature. Telling you you're something when you're not is parasitic by nature. Robbing children of their ability to, to transform and metamor- metamorphose into the, the, the Godhead that they are is parasitic by nature. All of these things have a massive grip on our entire reality. The material matrix is parasitic by nature. The economic system, the debt slave capitalistic system, the act of lending money and charging interest on it from fake money in itself, from fractional reserve lending is parasitic by nature. All of these things could very well be a product of people or whatever they are having parasites in them. And so we know that like what's inside of you, what's operating inside of you is really going to take over how you are operating. And then the whole vampiric energy where most people are, you know, they're in a position where they they have to take from people, right? The energy exchange is not there. It's just like, what can you do for me? What can you do for me? And if you're not doing it, it's on to the next one. It's on to the next one. And that you see that in relationships, you see that in, you know, meltdowns and 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 romantic relationships and business relationships and weird friendships and you see it in the nightlife scene you see it in all this it's all using 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 that's parasitic by nature to a point where all of a sudden your faculties start falling apart and you haven't really built an identity yourself so you're in a false identity most people that are operating in parasitic energy or vampiric energy don't even know it that's how the parasite works and so on a conscious level, when you, when you, when you get into Ahriman or Luciferic tendencies, their parasitism within them, they both have a strong, strong affinity for having to rob something from someone else. And so we, we got to snap out of that. We, we got we to gotta snap out of it. There's a whole thing on like, you know, you got to, you know, you are the sum of the five people around you. Choose your friends wisely. Don't let people screw you over. Be careful of that kind of energy. And I say that's all great. But I think instead of, you know, pointing out that, we got to point inwards and we got to look ourselves in the mirror and see how are we operating. And that's a practice of self love, which is the opposite of parasitism, right? How are we showing up in the world? Well, how are we making the lives of people around us better? What are we doing for ourselves to rid ourselves of the parasites? What are we doing for ourselves to understand how these microorganisms work? And when I say parasites, it could be anything. It could be even like, you know, heavy metal toxicity, right? Because heavy metals feed parasites, or it could be. Lyme spirochetes, right? What are those things doing in our body? Sexually transmitted diseases, candida, yeast infections, people that are constantly in that rigmarole. Like, where is that coming from? You know, the diets that we're eating, the foods that we're consuming, the poison we're consuming from TV and the news and all that frequency, that's all parasite driven. And so this is all just one big infection. And I think people now are starting to see, oh, wait a second, I'm not feeling good. I'm having weird symptoms. All of a sudden, I can't sleep anymore. All of a sudden, I have leaky gut. All of a sudden, I have inflammation shooting up all over the place. All of a sudden, I'm having anxiety all over the place. All of a sudden, I can't get out of bed. I don't want to do anything. I just want to escape. I just want to go and party. I just want to be around. You know, I just want to do things that take me away from my own shit, my own rotten mind, and my own rotten heart. Then you have self loathing. And then all of a sudden, you go to a doctor and they prescribe you with certain drugs and say you have chronic fatigue syndrome. What, what, how did we get chronic fatigue syndrome? That's a whole thing now, right? And then, and then from there, it's fibromyalgia. And then from there, it's Hashimoto's. And it's all these autoimmune stuff. And at the end of the day, what is autoimmune? It's, it's, they're telling you that your body's immune system or something's going haywire and it's attacking itself. That's because it's in a confused state when the whole time... You know, you have a whole litany of co-infections. You know, it's possible that, you know, you're having breakdowns in your GI tract. It's ending up in your bones. It's getting into your muscle tissue. You have cysts inside of you where all these things are hiding at. It's full on. And people are starting to wake up to that. We're starting to realize like, you know, maybe I have mold in my house, you know, and, and all these things, they, they, they work together. At the end of the day, we're talking about stress load right? 
the body is supposed to be able to handle this kind of stuff. We, we walk around in nature. We walk barefoot. We're going to be uh, contracting things. We eat food that's not fully cooked. It's going to happen. You're going to have sushi once every two, three months. You're going you're, you're to take on some kind of microorganism or some kind of, you know, whatever, microscopic parasites. These things are in nature, but we're supposed to have the innate ability in our immune system, the hydrochloric acid in our gut, the saliva in our mouth, the pH, all these things, and the, the, the immune system to be able to handle that. That's what being human is. It's like we, we got to bob and weave. But when you already have all those other stressors that are hitting you, financial stress, relationship stress, you're not drinking clean water, you're not hydrated, you're not mineralized, you don't have good nutrition. That's why we're so big on supplementation and eating the right products and getting naked in front of the sun and grounding to the earth and getting our breath work in and doing all the cool stuff that we're doing, the add-ons, all that kind of stuff, and, and meditation. Those, all of that is together. They're not, they're, they're not single. It's not a single thing. It's the whole encompassing that builds our vital force. And the interesting about parasites and toxins and all these things from, from everything that I just said is that they rob your body of oxygen. That's really interesting. They create an oxidative stress at the mitochondrial level, at the subcellular level. And that starts to become hectic and, and haywire starts to come, come, come about. And the body at that point is confused. Think of your immune system as a circle, okay? And you are, let's say you're at a battle, like your immune system in the middle and outside is, is the enemy. Now, I don't like the, the, the idea of fighting and war and all that, but I'm just using this as an analogy or a metaphor of how our immune system works. You want to, we want to have one line of one line where the battle is being fought. You with me? So we can bottleneck the invader and we can have all eyes being pointed on that. So the immune system can focus on other things. So the natural killer cells can focus on other things. So we're not having cytokine storms everywhere and tumor necrosis factor firing off and interleukin inflammation centers and C-reactive protein and all this different stuff. And our body's not filled with homocysteine levels rising and all these things. This is what rapid aging is that leads towards pathologies, like different forms of disease, cardiovascular, you know, brain diseases, all the different stuff. And so when you have co-infections and all these different things going on, you know, viral loads, Epstein-Barr, all these different things that are all popping off, you're now creating micro wars throughout the entire circle. And so the, your, your immune system is being stretched very, very thin and it can't focus on one thing. And at some point, your, the body gives up. And it shuts down. And that's when an autoimmune situation can trigger. And all of a sudden, something gets in. And once something gets in, then it's a lot harder to work its way out. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's, it's just one of those things that once the, you know, the, the dam is broken, then you have a cascading effect. And that's why you have people collapsing energetically, emotionally, spiritually, physically. You can see it. I, I come across it all the time. It's not a day go by. I don't get at least a couple hundred messages now of people in the peak of a complete collapse energetically, emotionally, and, and all of these, these symptoms hitting. So, so my whole thing is, you know, I love to cleanse. I love to do those things. We're, we're in an environment now that is more toxic than ever, right? There's things in the atmosphere. There's things in the soil. There's things in the water supply. There's things in the food. You know, you got millions of people on prescription drugs, you know, prescription drugs, we know what the, what those things can do to the human body. That's all symptomology, but they come with a whole list of side effects. And so what we have to do is we just have to mitigate that damage so we can go back to homeostasis. That's what it is. And that's like kind of what we're, we're, we're trying to achieve here with symbiotica. That's why we're trying, we're, I'm all about foundational health. Like, like we just mentioned, getting on the earth, getting grounded, getting in your breath work, making sure that you have your non-negotiables in place, like proper sleep, proper hydration, proper sunlight, proper movement. Proper, those are the foundations. Everything comes right after that. So this is an interesting moment in our time. I think people are starting to wake up to the fact that a lot of these viral loads and a lot of these pathogens lead towards major, major consequence, major, major dis-ease. And the, and the mitigation is the game here. It's not eradication. It's mitigation. It's boosting and working with your immune defense as opposed to trying to, you know, you, you get into some erratic behavior or some hypnotic state that I got to get rid of everything and this and that. It doesn't work that way. And, and that will always fail you. That's very fleeting. That's luciferic, right? That's a luciferic energy. It's disintegrating, right? 
We can't do that. We got to stay present in the body. We got to find balance. We just got to understand how these things work. And, and that's more information, more knowledge, more awareness. Like if you got mold in your house, you got to do something about it. You got to move. You know, you got to, like your, your health matters. If you're constantly going out and kissing people on the mouth, maybe think twice about that. There's so many bacteria that can be transmitted through kissing a random person, like gonorrhea or anything like that. If you feel like you know you're constantly having diarrhea and you can't digest food, maybe you have H. pylori, Helicobacter, right, which is ripping apart your tight junctions and causing alkalosis, which causes a cytokine storm, and all of a sudden you have a micro hole in your gut, and you have its permeability has lost its dexterity, and you're getting shit in your blood, and now you're have all these allergies all of a sudden that never you, like what's happening. Your body is not in balance, and you got to make it, you got to take a step forward, and you can't just keep drowning it out with more TV, more bullshit, more back to the same stuff, more depression, more self-loathing. You got to take the action. And you can't just get on social media and see other people doing it and think that you're doing it yourself. That's another thing. There's like a psych- <laughs> there's a psychosis to that, right? Yeah. Like we weren't designed to look at screens and see people living their lives. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. That 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 actually exercises the brain to think that they they're they're doing it too. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Well, that's so, yeah. It, it actually translates well. If you're you if you're you know for however long we've been around, if you're looking out in a field and and we're all gardening together in whatever permaculture setup we've 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 managed to put together, and you see everyone's hustling, they're planting trees, they're pulling out weeds, they're adding compost, they're chucking something over in a wheelbarrow or whatever technology is available at the time, that that is the imprint of I, oh we're all doing good shit together. Right, and I'm a part of that because I'm in the field with them. Yeah, right. But there, there, the disconnect is, is is absolutely there when you're looking through the black mirror because you're looking at something that you're not a part of. That's right. That's right. That's a really good point. When you're when you're doing um, operational things and movement things, and you're you're let's just say your feet's in the you know feet and hands are in the dirt, you're getting that camaraderie and you're getting that that energy that like I'm part of something that's greater than me. And that for me, I, I'm sure the same with you. That's the best feeling of all time. When you really get to that gnosis, like like I'm I'm embodiment, but I'm also part of something that's bigger than me with a tribe. There's nothing better than that. That aha feeling, and I know you know that feeling. And there's a lot of people listening to this that aren't aren't having that experience, and they think that they're in their permanence. Like this is it. That's an illusion. It will be permanent if that's how you're if you're not taking any action. And so you know, get off your butt. If you're not feeling good, search for answers. The information's there too. That's another thing. Like so many people are, are, are have been set up for instant gratification, right? It's just like we want, we want that one pill fix, whatever, whatever it is. It could be a supplement, it could be this, it could be that. And I find it really fascinating because the the alternative health community that's holistic is actually looking for allopathic solutions. Think about that. Just, just, just think about that. I know what you're saying here, but break that down. Well, what, what I mean is, is that, is that it, it, it's, they're, they're training, they're training and looking syst- like a, a symptom. symptom well, based. they want the answer. Yeah. Without doing the the investigation, right? And so, like for example, on my social media, I don't. Sometimes I, I come out with it straightforward on a solution, but ninety percent of the time, I'm just kind of like dropping a clue. So, so people can see that and then use their own discernment and then take action and investigate and do their own little research and then come up to a conclusion. I want that behavior. Then just tell me how to do it, Shervin. Just tell me how to do it. Because that behavior is allopathic. Yeah. Just go, just doctor. Fix me. Fix me. Yeah. No, that, that's not how it works. You, it's just like cramming for a test. Right, you're going to study the night before. You'll ace the test, but three days later, you'll know none of those. Why? Because you didn't investigate it. Your heart wasn't in it. You're just trying to memorize it and get an answer. But if it's a subject that you love, you know, you signed up for a course. It wasn't like you know some state sponsored school where you had to go sit there at 7 a.m. when you're 12 and, <laughs> and listen to some bullshit hit social studies or whatever. But it's something that you took like an art class or a philosophy class. You're in it to win it and to experience and to build your own faculties with it. It's the same thing with health. 
how come how come so many people that claim to be in the holistic community or alternative health community or outside of that and judge far, they know pharmaceutical industry is this or this or that don't want to take the action of creating the internal bandwidth and building those streamlines of faculties of learning and developing their own skill sets i i get so many messages how do i do this how do i do that i don't answer any of them I don't, I've ne- I'll never answer. I'll never open those messages, never. But once in a while, I'll notice someone that has done some investigation, has had some experience, has a- analyzed their situation, and has thoughtfully approached me through something that they've learned from me and given me their basically the synopsis of their experience. Those are the messages that I open and en- engage with because they've done the work, they've done the research. And, and that's really important. Like we ha- we, we talk about freedom. We talk about standing in our truth. We talk about operating with intention and all these beautiful things. Yet at the end of the day, when it comes to our very health, we don't want to do the work. That is a problem right now. And I'm not going to be part of that escapism whole whole chain. I'm not doing it. There's enough escapism on social media right now. There's enough corporatocracies that have gotten their fingers and their magic and their spells into the game of taking people out of their reality and giving them, you know, food and drink and liquor and give them the sports, give them the football. You've seen There's enough the, of that. You've seen the uh, the movie Wally, of course, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny because it's like, oh man, I remember watching that with Bear when he was super young, and I'm like, this is where we're headed. If uh, if we don't if we don't take control of ourselves, you know, and then it's fear. funny. It's like we're there. That's where we're at. We're there. The difference is that we're on the Earth spaceship. We're not on some fucking other spaceship. The eighth right. sphere. Yeah, we're in the realm. But, yeah, but yeah. that's exactly what's happening. Everything's fucking automated. Desensitizing everything. Social yeah. engineering. Losing bone mass. Getting fatter. We're not even. It's not even that you're, we're not agrarian, you know, living off our own food. But we're not even like now going to farmers markets anymore. We're having DoorDash. Mm-hmm. People already, That's what I meant. Like yeah. food, you're punching a button and then it shows up right to you, right? There's no effort whatsoever. And there's like, it's like, cool. How did that become cool? We're already in artificial boxes with artificial lighting, artificial temperature gauging, you know, all, all of that stuff. We're not getting, we're not in the elements. Just think about what's happening to our, our immunological response. Like we're not, we're not in hormesis. Like we're not surviving. So there's no Im- immune response to have to like take on that, that action. Why do you jump in cold plunges? You jump in cold plunges because your body thinks it's about to die. Go, you know, it, it's you know, hypothermia is kicking in, right? And your body has to survive, right? So you keep doing that. All of a sudden, that becomes flexible for you, and it's a muscle memory, right? And so now, when someone cuts you off on the freeway, you're not trying to kill them because it doesn't bother you because you've you've you're, you've built up that that stress. All the all the stressors that people are feeling on a daily basis that's taking a toll. We think that's just, you know, oh, it's a stressful day. No, that adds up. That you lose days on your on your volume of life and your health span and feeling good. Just like, you know, we talk about parasites and toxins and all, all these bacteria infections. Dude, people are having common colds four times a year, five times a year. That's not common. Strep throat once a year is not common. That was me as a kid. Yeah, that was Absolutely. you. Because you had a fracture in your immune system, mm-hmm. right? That uh, strep throat, you know, w- once a year leads towards weird diseases throat throat stuff you know what i mean like real real crazy stuff and think about it you have you're you're sick 3 4 times a year for a week or that adds up you're talking about 2 years of lost life you know what i mean of being sick that's not normal and so all all of these things they're accumulation of just not practicing self love at the end of the day if if you practice if you want self love and you love yourself and you value your life in this incarnation you're going to do the work, especially if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, know? you touched on so many great points there. I think one of the things, one of the pitfalls for people that I'm sure you experience is the fact that because we're in the information age, there's a counter to every argument, right? And you get like one side of the crew that says this is a, a plant-based is the way to go. The other side that says only meat, you know, nose to tail, organ meat. Oh my God. And if you did some investigation, you might find like reading and how to move and be healthy. Oh, I'm a, I'm a polar type. So I actually do better with more meat and less less carby vegetables. And then somebody's more equatorial and they're like, no, I need carbs year round and I don't do good on big game. I need like smaller animals. If I'm going to eat any, it's got to be fish or chicken, something like that. Your own right? scientist, like, exactly. your own investigator. And that's the thing. Your own investigator would lead you to that right? instead of just tapping out because there's arguments on both sides of the fucking coin. Absolutely. Yeah. You, again, that's a really valid point. 
And I think that's something that needs to be talked about more is that because of the polarizing isms that we're seeing online, everyone's telling you exactly what you said. Like, no, it's it's just straight meat. Everything's a toxic, it's toxic out there. Or, you know, straight plant-based, or maybe you don't even eat. Maybe you're a breatharian. I don't know, whatever it is. There's, <laughs> there's extremes all the way. All of them have value and all of them can back it up with certain case studies which they all like kind of, you know, they blur the lines though of what cur- your current situation is. I've, I've read studies that show that all meat are carcinogenic in the body that cause problems in the body. I've, I've read studies that the opposite. So it's, it's really partial and it's all about intention. You know what I mean? So like, how are you intending to use fuel in your everyday life? Like for example, coffee, right? I re- You and I just had a coffee. I rarely drink coffee, but this was a moment I was like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this drug in my body. I'm going to get a little bit activated and I'm about to go berserk with Kyle on the Kyle King, Kingsbury podcast, right? So that was, a, that was an intention that I had. And I'm, I've already taken my minerals. So I, I, can, I, can, you know, I can mitigate the acids and the dehydration I'm going to get from that. I've taken, my, I've taken all my stuff. So I, that's going to work for me. It's just really operating with intention. At the end of the day, everything we're talking about is are you are you taking your everyday unconscious? Are you eating unconscious? Are you talking to people unconscious? Are you not are you living unconscious or do you have intention? I know you, whenever I'm around you, I really notice how intentional you are with everything that you're doing. I know that when you when you are eating and when you're talking to people, there's intention behind it. It's a, it's a level of self-respect that you have for yourself. Right, it's not just having respect for other people; it's your own self-respect, and that energy really, it, it, I would say, invigorates me. So, anyone that's around that, that's the that's what we need to be spreading is that level of consciousness. How you do anything is how you do everything, and so if you're if you're just all over the place and haywire, you know, you need, really need to review your situation, and that's a Rosicrucian perspective as well. That's like the the mystics. They analyze their entire 24 hours. Before they go to sleep, they would review the entire day and they'd look and see like what patterns came up for me that took me out of my element. What er- what areas did I excel in today? What relationships, you know, were went, you know, didn't really call my my highest today? What what could I have done differently here and there? Like taking an account of your that that's discipline, right? And that's that's another practice of self love. I think the more we do that, the better position we're going to be to to live the best life ever. And again, you might not want to live the best life ever. So if you're hearing this and this is like, oh, I can't, I don't want to do any of that. Fine, that's your karma. You know what I mean? But again, if ten years from now, two years from now, five years from now, you you know you've hit rock bottom and you're asking why me, just remember listening to this conversation. Yeah. It's such I mean you're touching on something so important too from the Rosicrucian standpoint is is self-reflection. You know, and that was one of my biggest takeaways from dispelling with Tico. And I know Paul Levy has a new one out. Um, I don't know if it's like the return of Watico or <laughs> the Empire Strikes Back with Tico. Uh Empire Strikes whatever, Back. That's whatever, whatever it is, is is I'm sure it's more uh, a deeper dive into the subject, but I, I, you know, as Paul wrote it, he explains that just in writing it, he had a deep dive with Watiko. We joked about it before this podcast. I fucking had my deepest dive ever with it when I was reading that book. That's why I've held off on reading the follow up. <laughs> I'm fucking right. good for now. Yeah. But one of the major takeaways from that mind virus, mind parasite, is self reflection is the way you get rid of it. Like you can't see a vampire in the mirror. Self reflection is what gets rid of it. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. So that's that's really it. You know, like thinking deeply on that. How do I improve my life? It's 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 what you talked about. The very first podcast we did, momentum. Momentum is the thing that carries you forward. If you fucking fall off the wagon, momentum gets you back on the wagon. Momentum is what's going to keep you going through all the shit, uh, the whatever storm, whatever fucking curveball life throws at you. Momentum carries you through that, and it's very small steps forward. I keep telling people, fit for service, or even on the podcast, there's old football quotes that stick out in my mind: "Inch by inch, life's a cinch; yard by yard, life's hard." Right, so like, like just just baby steps, and it's continually making those baby steps in the right direction. That's right. Right, they accumulate. I'm, I'm checking little boxes, not big uh, boxes. I'm checking little boxes over and over again, and that's the shit that matters. Yeah, we always talk about that. You know, your your ability to transcend your own mess comes from the smallest of actions, and those deem the, those are what create your avenue and vision of purpose and intention. It doesn't have to be this massive cataclysmic event. It could be, 
those things are there. Those are those aha moments. But the just subtle changes that you're making in your life is what's going to put you in a position to feel good about yourself. And it's really the scientific method, right? It's reviewing and analyzing an experiment, right? And so an experiment can be anything, right? It could be like, okay, well, I'm not going to wake up at 9 a.m. anymore. I'm going to get up at 6.45 and I'm going to do 20 minutes of meditation. I'm going to drink clean water. I'm going to get a shower filter I'm going to move my body on the rise as opposed to sleeping in and then immediately waking up and running to work or whatever. And I'm going to see for a week what that's going to do to my energy levels. And then from there, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to maybe stop talking to two or three people that are, seem to be bringing me down a little bit. And I'm going to invest that time into myself because I love myself. Right. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're 30 days in and you're starting to feel better. Your glimmer in your eye is there. You have your your energy is higher. Your skin looks a little bit more clear. And then from there, you're going to go and listen to this podcast, you know, and you're going to listen to some of Kyle's podcasts. And you're like, wait a second, that's a really interesting point. Let me try that out for my life. And then you're at day 45, and all of a sudden, you're in a completely different reality. It's just like that. It's, it's not 10 years later, two, three days, a week, a month, and all of a sudden, you're in a whole nother position. And that is choosing you over, over choosing the system. And that goes back to, I believe, you know, the whole poverty conscious and victimhood and scarcity yeah. mentality, which are parasitic in nature. Those things are infesting the consciousness of, hum- of humanity right now. And that needing a savior outside of you is extremely dangerous. There's a fucking fantastic book that I just started called Not in His Image. Oh. Oh, God. It's so fucking good. Uh, uh, it's so good. I- I'll... I'll- I like yeah, that. You got you to check that out. I'll link to it in the show notes. It's a fucking brilliant book. But yeah, they talk, one of the biggest proposals he has, because um, he connects the Gnostic argument um, with- Is that Christ? Yeah, the Gnosticism, right? Yeah, like yeah. They, they got swept under the rug from the Nag Hammadi. And he, he connects that to the Gaia understanding of, of a living, energetic, breathing earth, right? Mm. And like marries those two, you know, with with the ecological wisdom buried inherently in that as Sophia. That's the wisdom of Gaia, right? So like when we tap into that and align ourselves to that, and that's something, I mean, Tasha has been telling me this for years. As she withdrew from fundamental Christianity and some of the different, you know, this is the way that it is, uh, uh, savior style, you know, salvationist ideology. She right. really started to look at that. What are the real tangible things that we can connect to? And that's when you farm or garden, even when you fucking garden, like you feel that connection. It's different. Like it's absolutely different. Like yeah. it, there's just a different feel, different connection you have to the weather. Like all my buddies bitching back home in California about the rain. I'm like, start a fucking farm, dude. You won't be crying about any of this. Totally. Right. right? Like, we can fucking get I rain. Love I come the out rain. and dance in the motherfucking rain and just clap my hands. <laughs> like, let's go, baby. Bring it's, it back. Exactly. Right. That's the that's like the true biology of belief. You you create the perspective based on your you know the 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 gnosis of what you know is is real and what you need in your life versus some like you know standard operating system that's been regurgitated through the public outcry. Like how what, where is our thinking coming from? Why are we having these reactions? Where did we learn this from? Is this from like Hollyweird? Is this from like you know our the trauma as a as a child? How did we get into the position where we have a where where we have a bias against things that you know might be polar opposite in its truth. So it's just like a radical change, and I I love the idea of farming. And I think we talked about it on the the podcast we did over at the Onnit Studio. It was you know biodynamics had nothing to do with creating the most mineralized food. It really had to do you know the Steiner's perspective of you know anthroposophia, right, which is the study of the wisdom of man. Right, and its reflection to the outer world through the inner world gnosis of self was becoming a real steward of the land for a child. What what that builds in the faculties of that child, and ultimately in, through adulthood, and is passed on through the wisdom keepers. And so, a child that grows their own food, and we're just using farming as an example. There's many other methods, but I think farming because it's it's a root system, literally. Is the is the I would say is the nucleus of how to do this, but growing growing food, understanding cosmos, understanding crystals and herbs, and t- waxing and waning of the moon and constellations and the sky clock and all that kind of stuff, and how to how to work with the the, the other. It's animals. a deep dive. It's not a fucking small dive. It's, it's, a, a, it's, it's a deep a, dive. It's a mystical. <laughs> it's a mystical dive that's rooted in common sense agriculture, and and that frequency is about building the human being. 
and becoming the steward and becoming the mystic and having reverence for the work. That's, that's what it was all for. It's similar like Waldorf schools. At the basis of Waldorf, it's you're not indoctrinating a child by saying, sit in this chair at 7.30 a.m. when you're nine years old and learn some indoctrination and you have to compete with every kid and you have to memorize this and pass this test. It's not that. It's And, and not think for yourself. It's creating an incubator of growth, being a steward as a parent, but letting children to have their own thoughts and emotions and creation. Let them deal with arguments themselves. Let them have their own experiences. Let them build their own ethos through their soul's incarnation in the body. That's stewarding their own path. That's, yeah, they've they've yeah. created a, a, sorry to cut you off. They've yeah. created this incredible container and it's about the container and everything that's within it. It's not memorize this fact. It's, hey, if we know if we set this thing up in a certain way, the innate intelligent that's within your being is going to come to shine. Uh -huh. And that's going to lead you to right where you're supposed to be. Right. And you'll get your minimum effective dose of fucking two plus two equals four and what other shit you got to memorize. Of course, basic, but, basic but, stuff. But, yeah. but beyond that, it's self-directed. Right. And that's such an important piece that we've lost now in the harmonic phase of life. There's nothing being self-directed now unless you, unless you vehemently oppose what's being taught in school. Totally. Imagine society today that had gone through that level of you know, childhood or that level of creation and growth versus the indoctrination schedule. Where would we be today? Where would we be as um, a race of people, right? Like where, where would we, would we fall apart in cataclysmic fighting? Would there be this, you know, left-wing, right-wing battle? Would we be fighting for scra scraps? You know, would it be divide and conquer? I don't think so. I think we've been indoctrinated as children for ge and we're generation lost. And people have no identity of themselves because they were never properly allowed to create their own identity. They were taking on a system's identity. And that's representative on how they treat themselves and how there's no practice of self-love, no development. I think we, I, I always talk about on every interview, how many people in the world right now are actually operating and living in their, their soul's journey? How many? 5%, 2%, 1%, a decimal of a percentage? Most of humanity don't even know where they are. <laughs> That's a whole other thing. <laughs> just, just we we won't we won't go down that rabbit hole. But just think about how crazy that is. It's like we're in some big mass hysteria. This is psychosis to the highest level. Most people don't even know what money is or what what relationships are. It's just it's insane. We're in insane times, but it's also the best ever because that's. That's why we can have these conversations and really have the, have the wherewithal to realize this is all part of the cosmic joke. And um, that's how I operate because I, I know how dire we are, the situation, how dire it is. Some would say it's not even the 11th hour anymore. It's like 11th hour and 59 minutes. <laughs> One, two, three, four, or almost at midnight. And uh, I would say that that creates a call to action. And I, I love, if you're listening to this, you're probably on board with the message and you're out there in your community showing up. And so I just, just wanted to say thank you, Kyle. And thank you everyone out there um, for standing up for yourself because that takes the burden off the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. And that's, that's, you know, one, I mean, we all, we all give each other permission. We all strengthen one another. Uh, I remember right, right when the thing, and I've talked about this multiple times on this podcast, but how, invigorating it was for me when JP Sears said, I'm going to fucking go down swinging, but I'm going to swing, right? Yeah. I'd rather live on my feet and, and, and then die on my Dominique, knees, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, Tupac. He, he, rolled, he rolled the dice with his millions of followers and said, I'm going to speak the fucking truth and it, it causes me to lose everything, so be it. And as it turned out, there was quite a few people, quite a few more people that were interested in the truth than him living a lie. And that was just like, fuck, man, that just pumped me up so much to be like, all right, let's have the interview with, with Mickey Willis. Let's have the interview with Del Big Tree. Let's, let's, let's fucking tell the truth. And if they shut down the podcast, they shut down the fucking podcast. If it gets pulled from YouTube, it gets pulled from YouTube. Whatever happens, at least I lived on my feet. You know? And so that, that's, a, that's an important one for people. It doesn't mean you have to go running up to everybody. Ha! I told you you were wrong. Like none of that stuff. No. Right? That's not going to solve the embodiment. Anything. Yeah, it's the embodiment of that. And it, and it is the thing that strengthens others, right? It's the thing that, that gets people to 
to feed off something in a positive way. It's not about right or wrong. It's, it's, it's simply, it's the thing, like it's in the energetic field you were talking about. There's a magnetism towards that, right? Because we understand there's sovereignty built into that. When you're doing your thing and you're speaking your truth and living your truth, that too bleeds off into everything around it. That's right. I, I respect that. I respect what you're doing. Um, I respect those two gentlemen as well. Uh, I know them both. And again, we can't dictate everyone's decision in this life. That's their karma. That's their soul's path. And, and people are going to make their own decisions and live, live out their lives. That's going to happen. I, I don't think the earth is going anywhere. You know, just, there's, there's just going to be, there's some, there's some serious changes happening right now. And we're, we're at a very pivotal moment. And so embodiment is really the key. You know, the, the system is telling everyone what to do. It's telling them in a thousand different ways, almost, uh, you know, subliminally, you know, at some point. They live. They live, exactly. So put your glasses on, you know, and look in the mirror first, right? And be the embodiment. That's how you do it. I can sit there and tell everyone, this is how you got to do it. This is how you got to do it. But if I'm not practicing it myself, who the fuck am I? You know, it's like what Steiner says. He says, you can philosophize all you want and, you know, become a clairvoyant. But if you're not using your hands and feet and creating things, that muscle is not engaging, then you're just an idealist. And it's, it's about putting action around things physically. So we got to start doing things. This world has become so crazy that people are, you know, becoming billionaires for not really doing anything. You know what I mean? If you look at like Wall Street and that whole thing and all the all these different things, there's just so much things growing without actual anything happening. It's just scraping off other forms of economies and monies and things of that nature. That's taking the that's that's robbing the youth to want to be doing things and learning trades and learning how to excel in things that matter, you know, as as opposed to just this, you know, computer stuff and like all these different things. Yeah, it's crazy hearing how many young folks are like, I'm gonna be a YouTuber. I'm gonna be an influencer. Yeah. And it's like, well, hopefully, I hope to God that you do something in life that 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 proves your weight, that that carries you. And that that's the street cred that you take into being an influencer. There it is right, right? there. Like if you fucking <laughs> that, that's, <laughs> right? it. Yeah, that's be it. Be an influencer that's for it. something that you've created yeah. that is tangible and has helped your life and is helping people around you. Right where it's it's become a pillar. That's what I'd love for you to teach that and use technology for that reason. That's how technology is amazing. Like technology is amazing because you can learn different things, you can see experiences, you can listen to podcasts, you can do all that kind of stuff. But that's where it should stop. It shouldn't. It shouldn't stop at detonating your spirit and de- detonating you know the soul's path of becoming you know someone that's multidimensional in this life and can do all kinds of things and 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 just the metabolic switch like that's really important i, I we talked about parasites and bacteria and all these infections these things are met, they're metabolic problems you know they're causing you know if you look at stuff like pcos you know polycystic ovarian syndrome and all all these different things these are metabolic issues that are coming that are happening because of multiple reasons multiple breakdowns in the body and the less we're moving, like you know, being sedentary, stagnation is is probably the I would say the one of the root causes of most disease is that we're not moving. And that's the, it, it. Just keeps going back when I'm hearing about technology and and DoorDash and all these different things. What the hell are we doing? Get outside. Get moving. Move the body. Exhaust. That's the biggest form of detox. Everyone's talking, shit, how do I detoxify? Move your fucking body. Yeah. That's it. You don't have to spend five grand on a sauna if you actually go outside and sweat. There you go. Right? Like a sauna is dope for sure. And passive sweating is different than active, but like the, it, at the very least, get some active sweating going, you know? Help your kidneys out. You know what I mean? Like get the lymph going. Get a gua sha that costs 20 bucks. You know, dig into your body. Roll around, roll on a ball. Get moving. That's all. Move you know, your the, spine. The That's thing another you're talking thing. Talking about is is self care, right? Self-love. And it is self love, right? Yeah, it yeah. really is because I think about those things for a long time. When I when I finished fighting in 2014, if I was still rolling or doing jujitsu, I'd still did a lot of self love. And then as I got here to Austin, I had a four, my first 40 hour a week job working in corporate America, right? Like on it was dope, but it was still a corporate fucking setting. And if I could fit in a workout, I would. But I really backed off mobility. 
And then it, I just started thinking about that, like, oh man, this fucking old nagging thing or that thing. This is the first year where I've made a commitment to, to do some version of mobility every fucking day, no matter what. So even if it's the last thing that I have to do after I read books to Baron Wolf and I go to lay down, I'm going to hit a super couch stretch. I'm going to get on my fucking little ball and dig into my saws and just breathe and open it up. And I sleep way better when I do that. It's a very small six minute box that I check three minutes each leg. If I do that, it's my whole day's changed. Even if it's the, literally the last thing that I do. Right. But like, that's the thing about making the box small enough that you can check it every day. It's like putting bumper, bumper lanes in for a kid. Like you're going to make sure you knock some pins down with the bumper lanes. That's making your box small. And then saying yes to fucking do that thing. That's good for you. That's your self-love. Do you know what you're telling your subconscious by doing that? Hmm. That you matter. That you have value. That you're worthy of it. That you care about yourself. Look at all these self-love coaches. It's everywhere, right? You know, all, all this stuff. That right there is the biggest practice of self-love you can get, offer yourself. Is that you're, you're actually saying, I'm worth 15 minutes of, you know, maybe it, it's not as comfortable as it should be. I'm worth it. I'm going to put myself through it. So if you're listening to this, ask yourself, what are you doing for yourself to tell your subconscious that you're worth it? Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I mean, that's, I'm getting into squats, you know, all day long. If I'm just standing there on calls, because, you know, I'm growing. Like Aaron Alexander just touching his balls to the floor. There you go. Like Aaron. <laughs> he's got, he's got, Hopefully Aaron's we see got the him. the best fucking squat of all time. He's just, he's down in it, right? Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. He's always in it. Doesn't matter where he's at, you There's, know? At the airport, I'm doing it. People are mm -hmm. looking at me like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? You know, it's like, we, we got to, th this is self-love. These are things that I know deep down in my head or in my heart or in my, every cell in my body. This is good for me. This is going to help me with sitting on a plane for three hours. This is going to help me when I go to sleep at night. I'm going to wake up less, less sore. It's going to give me more mobility. It's going to probably get more nutrition to my brain, right? That's a whole other thing we can get into probably on, on another podcast. I've been going into, you know, Mike Salemi has been helping me with the oh, outdoors. Dude. Hell yeah. And I had an outdoor trainer come to my house and all that stuff. And my God, I, he was putting me in situations that I wanted to kill him. Uh -huh. I've never been so uncomfortable in my entire freaking life. And he's like, keep pushing, keep pushing. And I, I'm, a, I'm on, on the ground. Every part of my nervous system is being stretched from toe to the top of my head. I can feel it ripping everywhere. He's like, yeah, keep going. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Pelvic trick, pelvic yeah. floor. Keep going, keep going. I want to kill him. I want to kill him. I bla I'm blacking out. Then he's like, okay, stand up. I stand up and I've never felt more in my body. And I break down in the most craziest cry ever. Emotionally, just everything coming out of me. And I'm standing there looking at the mirror and I can kind of see him next to me with the, just kind of a grin on his face. And, I, and I'm like, I'm like, Shervin, this is the epitome of loving yourself. And I was getting so emotional and trauma that had been stored where God knows in, you know, what vertebrae or wherever my body was coming out. All of a sudden I was feeling my father and I remember my dad had a sore neck and all of a sudden that image popped in my head and I'm gushing tears for like three, four minutes down in my gym area. And it, just, it was just like, this is it. This is it. I didn't need a drug. I didn't need to go to the jungles. I didn't need to go. It was right there for me the whole time. And that is accessible for everyone. Everyone out there can have that. And El Eldoas are, I mean, they're not, they're not a stretch. It's something, whatever you got, like, <laughs> it's stretching on steroids, whatever, whatever you want to do to magnify, whatever analogy you want to use, that's in a league of its own. Mike put me through one and on it back in the day. And, uh, you know, same thing, twisting, winding the fascia up, you know, fingers down, palms out, breathing, 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 feet on the wall. Feet on the wall. And I got up and I had a meeting right after and I was like, I, I can't, I can't fucking go. And he's like, are you okay? And I was like, I just need to lay here for a minute. I was like, can you run in Talabria? I can't make it. And then finally I got up and I went in there and I did my fucking just full body sweat. And I just like, I got to lay down. And he's like, all right. He could tell, you know, he's jarred like, something okay? loose. So absolutely jarred something yeah. loose. I saw purple. With my eyes open, I could see purple everywhere I looked. I was like, "That I don't know if I unlock something Le up left over, <laughs> left over L. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something, something got jarred loose for sure in the spine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and that that is you talk about something that is like you know, it's not it's not fun. The last three minutes of a hot sauna, 
Yeah. You know, when you're like, all right, I got 20 minutes from uh, fucking 17 minutes on, like it's work. Yeah. It's not fun in a, in a 32, 33, 34 degree ice bath. That's right. Right. It's fun after when I get yeah. out and I get the fucking rush of neurochemistry and I'm like, I fucking did it. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Right. right? Yeah. Uh, but there's pieces that, that aren't fun that we knowingly say yes to. Like the Eldoa fucking sucks. sucks. And then when you're done, you're like, holy shit, you feel a thank you from every cell in your body. You know, and that's totally. why I picked the super couch stretch. Super, I'm sitting all day long, sitting when I drive, sitting when I do all this stuff. Uh, even on the farm, we're pulling weeds. I'm on all fours, you know, like the hip flexors are are cocked. The psoas is shrinking, you know, and then I get into that super couch stretch and it's like the least fun. But as I'm doing that, I'm breathing into the space. I'm opening my body. I'm relaxing into the stretch. And after that, there's a fucking rush. It's like, holy shit, that was worth it, right? Then when I run, then when I box, then when I play with the kids, anything that I'm doing outside of that, I've now become a bit more supple. I've now become a bit more resistant to whatever the daily shit is going to be. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I love that you're doing all that for yourself. And that practice of self-love is priceless. And you're, you're setting yourself up for success over the next 40, 50, 60 years, right? As opposed to getting aramonic and calcified and fibrotic. Look at all the people with you know bone issues, all that stuff, that's because of lack of mobility and lack of nutrition going to those areas of the body, which ultimately is lack of oxygen, right? Which is really important to understand is that if you're not getting circuitry moving and blood flowing and nutrition going down your spine, cerebral spinal fluid pumping properly, all of these things, then you're having problems with the with your entire endocrine system and your electrical system in the body. We're electrical before we're chemical. Your heart's beating on an electrical impulse. And so we have to have constant movement in the body. We weren't designed to be sitting here. We were designed to be out in the trees, climbing, digging holes, moving in front of, in the elements. That's our natural survival, you know, pathways for, you know, immunological systems, sirtuin pathways. I mean, we can get into all the NAD and all that kind of stuff, but ultimately NAD and all that stuff is produced by taking action in our environment, right? And so, yeah, yeah we can supplement with these things. Fantastic. We're in that level of tech, but you got to you got to get moving. You got to get activated. These are these are and and it it all works out. You know your your ability to be regular, moving waste out of the body is is built upon that. It's interesting. So many people are constipated. They don't have that peritalsis. That that you know that movement is not happening because they're because of their lack of mobility. Another thing is the glymphatic system. Most people know what the lymphatic system is, but the glymphatic system is the is the garbage disposal system of the brain, right? And we're we're hitting record numbers right now with, you know, neurodegenerative diseases from Parkinson's to ALS to dementia. I mean, all of it. And really at the end of the day, what is it? I mean, yeah, there could be some genetics involved, but it's basically accumulation of waste and acids in the brain because of a lifetime of not sleeping properly and not having that glymphatic system being to being able to pulse. And if you're not moving and breathing and exercising, that's not going to trigger a healthy sleep. All, all of it's all, it, it's really simple at the end of the day. All, all the things that we talk about, they really have kind of, a, they all kind of mirror off each other. And it's not one thing and not the other. They're all related. You know, being stuck with, you know, a mountain of infections in your body is obviously going to dysregulate your sleep. It's obviously going to start attacking your central nervous system. Why does the Lyme, the Borrelia spirochete attack the central nervous system? Because that's where all the nutrition is, right? They want to go after the myelin, right? It's interesting that, um, you know, I had my appendix rupture when I was in, in 2010, almost killed me, right? It was the appendix rupture, uh, surfing incident, car accident, and the rattlesnake bike. Those are some of my close calls, right? And the appendix rupture was really, really interesting. And I, I started doing more research. And you know, the medical system says, oh, you don't need the appendix, you know. But it's a it's another form of cleansing in the body, right? And what happens to appendixes? I was reading some studies, they take appendixes out of people that have like an appendicitis, and they do an analysis of it and they see it's loaded with parasites. No shit. Yeah. That's really interesting. There's case studies on that. So it's like, okay, well, where, why is it going into the appendix? The more we more we understand it, the, the parasites are smart. They want to they want to embed in areas that it's hard to get to, right? Because that's the, the, it's just part of their 
their system, part of their technology, part of their information and how they work and operate. And central nervous system, they love the brain. They love the spinal cord. You know, toxoplasmosis or toxoplasma gonda. I think we talked about that. The cat parasite, Mm -hmm. really intelligent parasite. We know that that parasite's always trying to get back to the host. And so there's, they know that rats have toxoplasmosis and they start chasing cats so the cat can eat it. And so the parasite can get back into the host. How crazy is that? And and they say, and the studies are out or they're indicative that one third of the population have to- toxoplasmosis. No one shit. third. What? Not two percent. A lot of people. One third. One third. That's crazy. Just research it. And what does it do in the human body? Well, it makes you promiscuous. So you're still chasing pussy. <laughs> <There> you <laughs> go. Oh god, oh, that was man. a layup, buddy. That was a layup. That Thank was. You. That, I was testing you on that one. That was the best. I'm right ever. here with you. That was the best ever. But it it, it, it makes you irrational, hmm. right? Like that's another thing. Like it, it it some some kind of attack on the central nervous system and and your thoughts and your access to reason or logic, and you kind of throw all that out the window. Very, Sounds very like an addictive behavior. Like it might be like, like gambling or compulsive. Uh, compulsive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And so that, that that's just an, uh, giving you an example of what we're dealing with here and why we have to take the steps to you know bolster our immune system. It's not to become a hypochondriac and be scared of everything, right? We, we're going to have we're going to be exposed to things, you know, touching people, touching doorknobs. You know, all, all these different things. There's things out there. I'm still gonna walk barefoot. You're still gonna walk. walk it. So am I. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little bit of discernment. Am I gonna walk barefoot in the dog park? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah. Right. Am I gonna walk barefoot on the beach? Yeah, of course. Am I gonna walk barefoot in the forest? Of course. You know, think in my backyard? Yeah, of course. But just a level of awareness and then also, you know, taking the steps to lower and mitigate m- mitigate the stress in your life. All of that plays its part to perfection. Yeah, that's such a big one. And and speaking to everything that we've spoken to before, sometimes the best way to lower the stress is to go fucking head first into the storm. It's by engaging in something that's acutely stressful, that has a hormetic response that allows us then to adapt and deal with the bigger stressors or just the everyday stressors that can be insurmountable at times. It just quiets the storm. Like, can I step into the eye of hurricane when I get in an ice bath? What does that actually mean? That means I'm going to slow my breath. It's the first thing I'm doing is... And the faster I find that space, the easier it is for me to find that space when, holy shit, my wife's mad at me. What happened? Right? And not just engage, you know, like, what? In super defense mode. Reactive, yeah. Yeah, reactive. But just be like, oh, okay, let me find that center again. Oh, there I am. W- what happened? Oh, okay. Shit, I'm sorry for that. Or whatever the thing is, let's, let's find the solution, right? Instead of a fight breaking out because now I'm in defense mode, I'm triggered, and it's fucking game on, right? Which doesn't do anything. It doesn't serve anyone. Nonviolent communication. Ego, all of those things, they all play its part to how we react to things. You know, it's so easy to just want to like unleash on someone. I find I've noticed it within myself sometimes. I remember when I was a hothead somewhat and, and I, w- I would get triggered easily, almost looking to get triggered. I had to do some real, you know, a lot of inner work for that to kind of calm that and realize where is that coming from? Why am I, you know, and it, I realized that it was, it was my ego. I, I couldn't. I couldn't be second guessed or I couldn't be this or that. And that that took time for me to work on that and create avenues for me to be able to be expressive to myself on how to let go of that. And let me tell you, the the, the how far I've come over the last 10 years on that has changed my life. I wouldn't have been able to, you know, create all this and be in this, you know. I, I used to be a hothead, you know, 2007, 2008. I was the guy looking for fights. You know, I was, you know, I thought I was Robin Hood of types, but I, but I had that kind of energy, and so that was not serving me. That was exhausting. Yeah, and you can't be in the position that you're in, where you are a real influencer and you're doing real shit in the world, because as a trailblazer, as Paul says, says trail check says trailblazers take a lot of arrows. Absolutely, right. We're going to so, take arrows. Yeah, we're going to take arrows. Of course. So, like understanding that coming from your quiet center is going to be able to handle those arrows a lot better than if you're already fucking chomping at the bit for someone to fucking reach out to you online and shit on you, you know, like you you're just yourself. waiting on it. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's too many. It's death, just too many. Death by a thousand razor cuts, right? No way. I'm not going to live that life. And I, and I, and 
you're 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 on it. It's really interesting to see yourself in that state and look at it from a different vantage point and talk to the child of you, you know, because it's really a childhood behavior. You know, a, ch- a child um, sometimes can't, you know, process feelings and really sit back and and observe and un- uh, understand what's happening in the situation where it doesn't have to turn into a cataclysmic fight or a breakout. And that's really what all, this whole system is about. Wars and all these things, you know, taking orders from someone above to go kill, you know, 100 people. You know, it's like, what? <laughs> that, where's the love in that? Where is the humanity in that? And that's you know really just a cataclysmic breakdown of ego and and you know scarcity mentality. Not only should we succeed, but you must fail in the process too, so we can have leverage over you. Right? Yeah, Schmachtenberger talks about that game A is is uh, built upon win loss metrics. Yeah, totally. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's that's it. it. And that's not utopia. Mm-mm. You know, that's not harmony. That's not building long lasting rich lives that are built on empathy and beauty and creating more discovery. Win-win. Yeah, you know? win-win. Yeah. That, that's, that's why we all need to be winning together. There's no hierarchy here. You know, I don't, I don't feel hierarchy from you. I don't feel hierarchy from anyone that's operating with intention and is living the embodiment. The most people that I feel the hierarchy from are people that are, you know, more intellectual and not actually doing the work. And they just, they kind of know certain things and certain key less points. embodied though less embodied yeah and their their shield is hierarchy you know that's just kind of that, that's how that works and I, I've seen that and I, I and the reason why I see in it is because I saw it in myself when I was 24 25 26 I remember that I had a lot of judgment and I had a lot of opinions you know I was I was I was mentored early and I had a lot of amazing teachers and I thought I knew everything and I and I noticed that without the actual embodiment of these practices and just me just ramping off telling people what they're doing wrong it created an energy around me that i had to protect and that was that 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 wasn't working and after a lot of work and a lot of medicine and a lot of experience and a lot of self self reflection i was able to to rip that part and and actually put it somewhere else and and create a new butterfly and it was it's it's amazing process and i think everyone has access to those tools and it's for your it's for your own good. <laughs> yeah, you know, as hard as it is. Yeah, it's hard. No doubt. But it's for your own good. Having judgment is the is the root of fear. You know, judgment is always based on fear. Discern and I, we're getting into like lexicon and and how these wor- words work, but discernment is really taking the experience in and making the best decision based on an observation of deep inner work versus an immediate reaction. And that's that's how, you know, we can expand our business. That's how we can expand our love life. That's how we can expand our friendships and our tribe. You know, I think that's how you and I have connected so deeply. We're not in each other's lives on an everyday basis, but I see I, I haven't seen you in a year or whatever it's been, 9 months. And the last time I saw you I hadn't seen you in 9 months or whatever, but it's almost like you and I talk every single day. That's how I feel around you, yeah. right? And I have that with you know, a certain group of people, that same energy. It's because my 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 walls are down with you. I don't have a wall. It's impossible for me to feel any other way except freedom and sovereignty from a, a bond of man to man, the love that I share that I have with you. And that right there is is really important to have that with your brothers and sisters. You know, that's what family is all about. It's unconditional love and knowing when to share something to help a situation and when it when you're being asked asked upon to help in a situation and that's 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 you know that's what bonding is all about and that's what you know that's why we do the medicine you know that's what it's all about yeah yeah of course and that's that's totally likewise too there's (laughs) like i think i think what what allows that too to work if i was to to try to figure out you know like why is that true um i never have to worry about what you're doing I know you're fucking doing the thing and I know you're fucking as busy as can be, but I also know you're not just grinded on symbiotic or grinding on work life that you you're grounded in reality and you're doing your own personal work. And every time I get a fucking text from your call, I'm like, fuck yeah, dude, let's go. They're like, Oh shit. It has been like six months. Yeah. So, you know, I'm doing the same thing, right? I'm building this or I'm doing that. And I've got the fucking two kids and (laughs) you know, like it's all, it's, it's a lot. And at the same time, 
uh, neither one of us sacrifices our dedication to our own improvement, our dedication to our own groundedness and our dedication to our own healing. Yeah. You know, and that, like that, that's anytime I hook up with you, I'm like, what, what's fucking dope and what's new in your life? Because I know there's something new and I know it's dope. I love that brother. Thank you for that beautiful reflection. And I, I just want to say that we're doing this, this conversation, we're having this conversation in Austin on your birthday, on your born day, which falls on the, the 24 hour post Persian New Year, cool. which is the spring equinox, which is the true New Year, not yeah. this Gregorian calendar bullshit. This is the true New Year, right? This is yeah. the awakening of the internal slumber. And so that's powerful that your born day falls right in that, that point of this sky clock on this earth, in this realm. And uh, it's, it's an honor to be able to have this reflection with you on the turn of the internal slumber that's going out towards the creative energy. Because in the Persian tradition, you know, our, our equinox, our new year, the spring equinox represents the time that you engage in the, the alchemy of fire. And fire is the alchemy that turns matter into dust. It turns it into another, it puts it into another realm. And so we are metaphorically going into the fire to purge and cleanse all that does not serve us to make way for the new sowing of the seeds, for the new soil, for the new energy and the new life. And it's awesome to, that your born day falls right in that cosmic development. And that's epic that we're having this conversation on that right now as I'm you know, viewing the, the landscape of, of Austin and this you know, rainy, misty day. It's really epic. This is, <laughs> Fuck yeah, brother. This is, we're, we're living in some kind of morphogenic field. You know, this is a simulation, um, not machine simulation, um, more of just, you know, some kind of creationism. You know, not, this isn't random. Our yeah. lives are not random. And so it's no, epic to it's be just, doing it, this. There's a, there's a, a, a divine intelligence, no Absolutely. doubt. You know, intelligent yeah. design to the whole thing. Yeah. I feel that, brother. 100%. Well, it's been fucking awesome having you on. We, we didn't take a deep dive into Onto Parax. Parax. I'll, but, I'll just, I'll just let's I'll, drop some knowledge just, on that because it's very important. I mean, remember you were telling me about this a long time before it came out, and I was like, "This is obviously just you know you work with people when you're like you, I can figure out so many things through health questionnaires." And I'm like, "Ah, it's pretty fucking clear to me that you've got either a massive candida overgrowth or parasites or a combination of the two. Like this, and it's not going to be solved without actually doing head on with right. this thing. You know, that's right. You know, I there's so many parasite cleanses out there. I've been part of so many in, in my life." You know, all of our, you know, stewards and mentors are all about cleansing. I'm about cleansing. You know, there's different ways to detoxify. We wanted to create something that wasn't a cleanse per se, but an immunological modulator, meaning that it was going to bolster your immune system. So you're not working at a deficit for your entire life. And that was really key when it comes to co-infections and things like that. So this has never been done before. We're entering a whole new space in terms of nutraceuticals and technology and all those things. This is two years in the making. Um, these are liquid capsules with micro B delayed release technology. It looks fancy as fuck. And just it's very fancy. Like, Damn, and it's got a flavor to it. I was like, how do you get the capsules flavor? That's or, a whole organoleptics. You know, that's something that we wanted to bring to Symbiotica, so you can have an actual experience. There's something to that. You know, smell is powerful. The sensory of smell and flavor is huge. It activates you. It makes you want to keep going back to it. So that, that energy is there. And it's it's all done through its own organic state. So it's not like some kind of masking system. And um, this is, you know, you have powerful, powerful oils in here at high, high purity levels. Unlike anything you can find out in the open market, combination of oregano, thyme, clove, monolaurin, um, full olive fruit extract. And, and those are ozonated as well, right? Triple pass ozone. Talk, so, yeah, talk a, bit, a little bit about that. You know? so, so ozone is unstable oxygen, O3, and then there's more carbon links attached to it. And so what happens is when, you know, it's kind of how, it's how, so this is herbal medicine. This is, I'll get into it. There's biblical stuff in here. You have atmospheric in the ozone. The earth cleanses itself through, you know, the technology of ozone. That's how it cleans the atmosphere and things like that. So we now know through, you know, advanced science and all the different strategies and modalities that ozone is a very powerful treatment for the human body. Unstable oxygen is a heavier uh, oxygen molecule. And once it gets into the body, if you're doing like direct IV or, you know, insulation, whatever, whatever it is, it ultimately it converts into hydrogen peroxide. And that conversion then makes it active to destroy 
things that shouldn't be in the body like pathogens and, and stuff like that. It actually detonates the cell walls of these critters and things like that. So this formula, you got that oil and then it's been triple past ozone. So you're getting all of that into the, the gut. And then you have the microbeads in there and there's 40 compounds in there. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a, cu- a couple of them. One of the main ones in there, which is my favorite, is caffeic acid phenethyl ester, CAPE. And it's the main, um, it's the main polyphenol compound that's found in bee propolis. Right when you told me that, I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that's so this rad. crazy stuff we're dealing with. No one's doing this out there. And uh, I'd like to think that, you know, the Symbiotica family and the team of really putting this together and working hard with me to make this happen. You know, caffeic acid, phenethyl ester is, you know, what mother nature designed to protect the hive. Just think about that. And what does the hive and the bees represent to us? Life without pollination, where would we be today? Yeah, Paul right? calls them the sex organs of Mother Earth. That's right. They are the sex organs. They are the, the they're the converter, they're the alchemist, the master alchemist. They're, you know, Steiner, his whole B lectures. If you drop into that, if you're listening you got, to this. Please send me some. Oh, I'll fit. put it in the show notes if I can, but I want to I will okay. fucking chew up anything you send me from Steiner. I'll oh chew it up. my God. His B lectures are so full of like so many wisdom. Um awakenings within because it's all it's all internal awareness that we already know so it's not like you know some curriculum it's like it's like oh okay i remember that from 10,000 years ago and so the the caffeic acid has crazy peer reviewed published studies on its antiviral anti-carcinogenic antimicrobial anti-parasitic qualities that are insane and then other stuff that has nothing to even do with with those things other things from neuroprotective to cardiovascular to reproductive it's insane there's luteolin in there there's you know artemisia in there there's skull cap in there and we're not taking the weeds and seeds meaning like you know the the actual like biomass and just shearing it we're taking the active compounds within those herbs that's what's in there. So you're not just stuffing yourself with biomass. It's actually, you're just taking the, the, the main active compounds. You're getting a, a really powerful, powerful load of compounds in there that are bolstering the immune system. And also it's bolstering the immune system by lowering the loads in the body. So it's taking the, the immune system to, hey, hey, look, time out. We got this. Okay, go, go focus on something else. You know, go, go do apoptosis over there. You know, go, go go work on your Krebs cycling, you know, natural killer cell, go over there. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's, that, that was the concept behind it. I didn't want to blow people out through cleansing. I wanted to, I wanted to create systems in there that help bolster that, that along with our new inflammatory health formula. It's just like, came on, like we're, we're really helping people and I'm, I'm excited for what's coming. Fuck yeah, brother. I'm excited <laughs> for what's coming too. It's yeah. been dope to be on the, be on the ride with you, brother. Of course, man. I mean, it's just beginning, dude. This, <laughs> Fuck is, yeah. this is our time. Well, I'll link to, uh, Wake the fake up with the podcast that you just did with David was fucking excellent. I'll link to that in the show notes and people can check out your podcast. We got to get you back on. Firing back up again, right? We got to get you. Yeah, we got to get you back on. You know, my my whole thing with wake the fake up is, you know, it's just like this. It's just having happy conversations. It really is. It's not telling long winded life stories and all that kind of stuff. It's just like, hey, what's going on in your world right now that's consuming your energy and you're really like stoked on. That's what it is. It's very similar with what we're doing right now. And uh, I can't wait to have you back on, man. Yeah, brother. Yeah. Absolutely. We're not here to wake up the sheep. <laughs> We're here to wake up the lions. Yeah, buddy. Yes, sir. The sleeping lions. That's right, That's man. one of my favorites. <laughs> Love you, brother. Love you too, man. Happy birthday. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>